all right welcome back to cut buzz with galen otherwise known as killer monkey art we uh we're we're done with the shop right i believe so yes all right um i don't i don't think i got anything else to get rid of i mean the only thing i can think of that would be a major improvement right now would be if we could get a uh, rifle for you it's not that bows are bad it's that rifles are better imo at least until a later and then bows are better again <laughs> Well, that's nonsense. Well, because it, here's the thing. I mean, there's very good rifles, um, but uh, they're, they're kind of a little hazy, in my opinion, about, like, their circumstantial use. Um, whereas bows, like, you, since they've recently added um, more arrows of, like, different types that, like, scale with penetration, they just become, like, really good again late game. But with rifles, there's a lot of different rifles. They're going to be really, really good very, very soon. But anyway, uh, uh, enough of that. Um, why don't we hit the Q button and see what our next task is? We know we're heading to Golgotha, but there's something I want to show you. Travel to Golgotha. Find a dysfunctional way droid. Repair the way droid. Return to Gritgate. Now, see that bottom bonus reward for completing this quest by level 12? Mm -hmm. That means um, it's like difficult enough to achieve this before level 12 uh, and even like even at level 12 that doing so is warranted of an extra reward so what that really means is that we shouldn't do this for a while until you're like at least level 12. i wouldn't honestly uh, like the first run through golgotha would not recommend doing it until like level 15. so that's really all, all right I, all i want to um, so I can, um, you know, here's where, where Caves of Cud starts to open up in terms of, uh, being a very open natured game, an open world RPG, essentially. Um, we have a lot of options. Um, we can go back to that historic site that was bad. Um, and I, I don't necessarily recommend that, which is unfortunate. Um, we could go and do something called ruin diving where we go and find some loot in a ruin. Uh, we could also check out the salt dunes. Um, they're a pretty good way of finding some extra trinkets and also, um, uh, earning some XP. I want cells. <laughs> All right. For that, we should definitely do some ruin diving. We'll find some cells in a ruin for sure. We could also check out the asphalt pit. That there tends to be a lot of technology there, but okay. ruins are a good way. And ruins are also very close to us right now. Great gate tends to nestle itself amongst the ruins. So we'll probably, will yeah, you're going to have to go down to go up. Like the, uh, go south, I should say. Ooh. Now we're good. And you can do, uh... Oh, I think there's a, a cell to your right, actually. That blue thing? I think that is actually a cell. Might have been a, uh, a way droid that died. Yeah, you just got a chem cell. Freebie. So you can slot that into your uh, nano pneumatic jackhammer if you want. It's uh, This is uh, one thing you're going to have to... Oh, I, never mind. I guess you can just throw it in there. I didn't know that, actually. Sometimes you just got to try things. Yeah, I mean, that's one yep. of the benefits of this series is that you may try something I've never thought of. And then I'll learn, too. Perfect. Well, we've already achieved right. the uh, the goal of today. Now what? Great. End of episode. End of episode. Um, which, which historical place did we die in? Uh, that would be uh, Kabad, I'm pretty sure. Or Memor Granary. It's the one that's in the middle of the the rust rust uh, wells. Might have been. Can we go to the saloons of Kabad? We is could. that the one? Was that the? I think it's north of us. Let's uh, let's get out of here and then we'll uh, we'll make a plan. Nope again. You can always, by the way, I don't I don't know if this is helpful. You can always tell how deep you are, and if you look at the top right corner, it'll tell you how how deep. This is uh, one before the overworld level i guess all right 
so we know the one uh toward south is bad we didn't do this one in the jungle I... what was that one yeah what was that one saloons that of was kabad. the saloons of kabad we, well, they were kabad they after were all. real kabad yeah but it's got a fancy thing there that that i want to find there's a fa fancy thing in all historic sites they all have a thing the the thing is going to be different the uh historic sites are all procedurally generated and so is the thing in question right but we knew about the glazedusius derelish de boon yeah so the main benefit to getting that is that we actually also get experience for acquiring the glazedusius glazedecus derelish boon um if we don't have the quest we don't get experience until we get the quest it's kind of a uh, cumbersome in that in that way but we can still go and get the thing and the thing is always useful the thing in historic sites is they're some of the best items in the game and there's golgotha there's golgotha and there's bethesda susa we will not be going there for quite a long time did red rock did oh red jopa rock. there's jopa that thing at the top is the asphalt pit and then that's the six day stilt you get a chunk of XP for just going to the six day stilt. Oops, started moving. That's all right. So yeah, these uh these like kind of buildings are all ruins, and we could just pick a random one and check it out and see if we find anything good. We could check out that historic site in the jungle. It might get a bit spicy, but I can't imagine it being much more spicy than the uh, the one near the rust ruins or rust wells. Sorry, what one is that? What, what? The huh? the red and yeah, that one, Merva Mervatum. All right, so we'll head for that one. We'll check it out. Scope it out, you know. Do a little scopey. We we'll get some XP just for coming here, which is nice. We could just leave as winners. No. Yeah. <laughs> let's see oh you leveled up as well you're level mm -hmm. 10 so i'm hungry yeah you you do get hungry a lot you are inspired we could make a a, a fresh meal something something with some oomph to it now, a meal no that's that not wasn't it. it that wasn't it well, it's okay. You you you're, you can make another meal. You're even though you're not hungry, you can still eat. I. So, yeah, you know, I could do pickled mushrooms. I can um I can give you hints as to like what each of these ingredients do, or you can just experiment. That is also super valid. Let's see what that does. Get itchy skin. You don't thirst for the next 12 hours. Okay. 75% chance that itchy skin doesn't develop into a fungal infection. That's nice. Thirst at half rate. Cool. Whenever I drink fresh water, there's a 25% chance I am immune to fungal spores for six hours. Yeah, I'll say most of those are not great. This, this The middle one's okay, though. At least you don't thirst for half, right? So it has a very, like, tangible benefit. Nice. So now, now that you've made a note of that recipe, you can always make that and get a consistent result. As long as you have the ingredients, of course. All right. So, um, much of uh, the difficulty of this ruin is going to make itself known by like the first thing that we find our first enemy we find here's hoping it's nothing super spicy not like novice of the sightless way spicy pass a ziv bow those are new trees cud has been furnished with new trees recently okay those are i forget what their name okay. is Whoop. neftali Naphtali are actually totally fine. Not a big problem. 
Um, those don't seem to be cult. Like, they're not part of the ruin. So they're Ooh, just part of the jungle. Oh, that one's got a fancy short bow, though. Yeah, we could definitely go and kill them. Get, pick up uh, pick up their stuff. But my main concern is that this ruin is in the jungle, and the jungle can be some of the spiciest terrain in Cud. You are on fire. There's a lot of them. Okay, um... Well... Did, hold on, hold on. Um... To put yourself out, you want to hit the wait command because the wait command, your character will automatically pat themselves out. That's uh, that would be five on the number. There you go. So you're no longer on fire. This is good. You've actually got a pretty okay choke choke point because you only have to fight two of them at once. You have been hobbled. You're taking fairly consistent damage but at least you're not taking like a massive chunks of damage it's kind of like a very slow burn you might want to pretty soon take some witchwood bark so many little guys there's a lot of little guys all right at that point i might recommend taking some witchwood yeah okay <laughs> At least you know exactly what, like, where they are, so if you become confused, you can continue fighting them. You didn't get confused, so it's a non-problem. That was your last which would bark, but you still have, um, salves, should you need more healing. Stunned, stunned. You're, uh, you're slowly working through them. Nice, uh, nice tact with the, with the, the range. It's actually great. Cause I, I don't know if they were actually moving. Well, they were range too, right? So uh, they're not gonna. Right. They were, they were shooting you with a blow gun. They hobbled you. Hobble is pretty bad. Cause they're, they've got like a little shirt, a, a dirk. And they, uh, they, they kind of like go for a, a, a vein and you start bleeding. You should be okay though. We don't we don't want to collect that. Uh the this if you go look. Oh. There, there you go. That's what I want. Aura Tafian Church. Painted with a scene from the life of the ancient Sultan Oro Tafa. Alright. Is that better than my current bow? Uh, I don't think so. It's exactly the same, in fact. But it's prettier. It is prettier, yeah. So you could use it. It also comes with some reputation for a specific cult. Not enough to make any kind of difference, but, you know, some. <laughs> Something I have actually never tried to do in Cud is to, like, find enough painted objects that belong to a specific cult that I become friends with that cult and then go and rob them <laughs> without uh, without having to kill anyone. It's an interesting idea, actually. I should try that. Uh, daggers are good. Daggers are good. Yet. Corpses are bad. Corpses are bad. If you, right. uh, stand on that tile and hit the G key, you'll have a better... ...screen. Won't that just make me... No, get everything? No, it, on it only put... It only takes everything when there's only the one thing. Mm. And we need to check your options. I meant to do that. We, we want to check your options. There's a there's a option to turn that off so that you always look at that screen, even if there's only one item. Yeah, let's do this real quick. Um, go. want to go to, I think, uh, auto get. Always display the list of items during a get, even if there are only one. It's an under prompts. Turn that on. Perfect. That is a good setting. Also, you might want to check... Um, Go to display pop-ups when, uh, sorry, the, uh, HP warning threshold and turn that to 60%. There you go. Reason being is that if you ever lose a third of your health in one attack, you want to be informed of that. <laughs> and then probably hit the bricks. Just leave. So we can do, we can do an auto-explore. Hopefully the Naftali are the spiciest thing here. A table. There is a table. Uh-oh. So okay. that makes sense. And now it makes sense why they're the Naftali are here. That is a legendary um, 
idol of Ipsis. Mm -hmm. They are loved by the Natali tribe and robots. Got a lot of stuff. They're disliked by villagers. They're dis hated by vines. Um, so this is a, an interesting position that you're in right now. Uh, all I'll say is that reputation with either the Naphtali tribe or robots is very, very valuable. Mostly because reputation with robots is like some of the best reputation in the game. So okay. you can you can absolutely, if you want, fight this guy. He is aggressive to you right now. Um, or you can make the decision to try and make friends with him at a later date, which means you would have to like flee from him so you don't accidentally kill him and then uh, try and make friends with him later. Up to you. I leave I leave the option to you. That's a good call. <laughs> the closing of the door was a nice touch as well. Oh no, a tree. Tree that is in your way. There's a path down. Yeah, if you can be on friendly terms with robots, um, a good portion of Cud's hostility. Ooh, that is lurking, lurking Beth. Beth. That is a really nasty plant. Um, don't don't auto attack it. You will just walk into it. Hold control and then hit down. There you go. Ah, okay. We don't want to be here anymore. There's a ton of lurking Beth, and it is really nasty. Um, you're gonna want to take a salve. Take a salve. Yeah. You go to your tonics. Mm. And then hit yourself with a salve injector. And don't move for a sec, because the problem is, is that you're not sure where there's more lurking Beth. And if you step on another one, you will likely die. Cool. Um, the fact that there's lurking Beth here, I might recommend just leaving. Yeah, you don't even get experience for killing lurking Beth. They're basically like plants in Cud are, are the cud equivalent of traps there's no way to like eat well, them in advance you can wait you did you notice how when you waited um one of them was revealed yeah so if you stand near them and wait then you have a chance of revealing them problem is, is that you're gonna have to do that every single tile lurking beth just suck they're just really really nasty um Ooh. Yeah, like they're they're all around you right now. Here's uh what I would recommend. Um you know there's something valuable here which is the robot rep and you don't necessarily want to accidentally get into a conflict with them either. Why don't you uh recoil to a crit gate? And then we can we can try something else. And this way you get to see how uh the recoilers work. They're fun. Zoop. We. Yee. Um, I've leveled up a couple times since looking at myself. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, we're at 19 intelligence, so there are some new options there. Uh, you definitely have some more skill points. You can throw some uh, attribute points on something. I tend to kind of procrastinate on that because I'm not sure what is going to need more but you could just throw them both on like strength um, since your main method of attack is you know your cudgel let's see, maybe we can check out what some of the prerequisites for cudgel are and then decide yeah so you'll need a lot of strength in the late game if you want to get some of the late game cudgel skills um other option is like check out what bows and rifles require. Yeah. Uh. We could get into tinkering. The main benefit to taking tinkering now, along with disassembling, is you would um, be able to disassemble all those bits in your inventory that are taking up space. I am going to do that because it was on my list. I want to get tinkering and I want to get like distance shit going you want bows and rifles you've already got um pretty much like your best range 
like you you won't have more accuracy a lot of the bows and rifles abilities um just like offer debuffs to whatever you're fighting which are good but they're that's good. good that is good um i just wanted to make it clear what what you're getting into there i won't lie um you know cut's greatest asset is also one of its most intimidating factors which is it's you're spoiled for choice there's a lot of cool stuff here i will say uh you probably won't need scavenger and you probably won't need repair but um i would say they're not very worth their uh their thing if you want to actually start making things you will want tinker one okay okay that's 100. shield makes you more effective at shielding it also offers some passives when you do shield so like mm. it, it, it works it pairs very well with cudgel because it actually offers a chance to daze your opponent which means that you have a better chance of stunning your opponent um it's it's just very good but uh, shield is you know not super like it, it works sometimes it's circumstantial it's like a, a a kind of a gambling passive i'm gonna get bonk this time just so <laughs> i see how annoying that is you always have the option of not using it like you can try it for a while um here's what i had you know my my general rule of thumb like while playing is that i take it knowing that i'm probably going to forget to use it except when it counts like when you're up against a really tough enemy that you really want to kill using conk is just going to make your life a lot easier um but you don't have to use it against every mook and goblin right you don't have to use it against snapjaw warriors like you're already able to one shot kill them okay yeah. so now that i've got tinkering do you stuff with this yeah well, welcome to one of the most like tedious interface issues in code um go ahead and hit the space bar and then go to disassemble all you're you have two options mm. here you can go to disassemble all and then it boots you out and now you have to go back into the inventory and then do that, do that again. <laughs> Your other option is to basically, uh, like when you press space, hit disassemble and then rapid fire, like space, space, disassemble, space, space. And that is somehow faster than hitting disassemble all. I do believe that this is something that the devs are working on, but I, I don't think I can make that promise. I know it's on their radar they are aware that it is not a uh, very fun thing but it also doesn't come up very often the only time you have a pile of microchips in your inventory like your character automatically disassembles them your character is smart enough that when they automatically pick up a, per a burnt capacitor that they'll disassemble it on the spot and you don't have to do this anymore but um the other like the other possibility is that there are enemies around, in which case your character is also smart enough to know not to disassemble things while there's an enemy within threatened range. So they'll pick it up. They might they might pick it up, in which case you have it in your inventory when once combat is over. But uh, then you have to do this again. Okay, now that I've done that, what did I what did that get me? So see on the right side there, you have a bit locker. Mm. All of those bits are used to build and modify uh, uh, items. Um, the further down the list of items on the right that you go, the more valuable, the more rare. Um, and you will also get them for disassembling like other technology. In fact, we could go through your inventory right now and see if you have any technology that you will not likely use and don't plan on making more of. Always a good idea to Oh, actually, yeah, we could do that. Go to go to your fungicide grenade. We are very unlikely to actually use this, but you see how on the right side there it says CC one. Mm -hmm. That's those are the bits that we are likely to get. I say likely because you uh, you don't have a hundred percent chance of getting everything, but you are likely to get like basically the most valuable bit, which is the C. And then you have a chance of getting extra bits, which would be the one. Does that kind of make sense? Hmm. We don't want to disassemble the thermal grenade. You definitely want to keep any technology that you 
would want to make more of because later on we can um if you have like a thermal grenade and you want to make more um we can actually learn from the thermal grenade how to make more thermal grenades okay this is also true for chem cells i'm not sure how that got this um unequipped how did that happen i don't remember it's a weird one it also still has an old chem cell in it oh, oh. <laughs> that's why that's that like that that's why i never did that <laughs> it's because you i was thinking oh yeah we swapped out the chem cell but no we just unequipped our our weapon and equipped a chem cell <laughs> that was gonna be really right. funny um so yeah you can't really do it in here we gotta go to your equipment and then uh go to your jackhammer and then replace cell and then select the new full uh, chem cell and there you go now can i you should be able to use it to drill through walls and stuff again mm -hmm. look at this can i you could disassemble that if you want. And I can't I can't learn until I'm a better tinker tinker boy. Um yes, there's a better method for learning from technology than to be a better tinker boy, but yes. Um you have other chem cells, so you don't have to worry about this. Um you could just like disassemble it. Get some extra bits. It was basically barely worth like anything you know, like it didn't have any charge left in it so it's not going to serve you you can also see okay. um you see the grit gate recoiler the chem cell mm -hmm. is fresh now yeah that so you can kind of maybe gauge from that how much a charge uh is used up from using the grit gate recoiler this is all i know this is all like kind of like getting into the granular mechanics of cud but it's really just to kind of like draw attention to there's like working systems with all of these and they are pretty intuitive but um they are there so uh do we want to break the episode there that's a pretty good place to break it uh sure oh uh, we did very much but we did learn valuable lessons about equipping camp cells we did and uh tinkering and uh you learned conk that should be good we'll probably want to apply the the a shortcut key to that so you don't have to click the button every time we can do that we'll now see. actually before we <laughs> if you want real real quick okay um hit a and then go to conk and then hit enter I think if you yeah you've you've just used it i just did a conk you did sort of you wanna yeah and now i recommend like f2 you can I do f don't you, all right because my keyboard requires me to press an additional button button for, for f2 oh no um all right can i just use a regular number Thing. They don't seem to do anything. Right? Yeah, you can. Yeah. There you go. All right. And it lets you it lets you know that next to conk that 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 is the thing. All right. Do you have any closing thoughts? Oh, I can't wait to get to wherever it is we're going. Golgotha. Are we going there? I thought we weren't going. I'm not a big enough boy. Yeah, you're not a you're not a big big lad. Got to get your big the, big boy pants on. At least two more. Actually, I mean, considering the nature of Golgotha, you probably want some overalls. Okay. All right. Well, if you're enjoying the series, uh, cut buzz with Galen, and maybe hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. Even if don't even consider it, just do it. Yeah, just do it.